Hello and welcome to this video about static electricity. So normally when we think about electricity we think about it in terms of um, some kind of circuit with components in the circuit and we think about it in terms of electrons carrying charge around that circuit and with, the, with this electricity the key difference is that the electrons in a circuit like this are allowed to flow with static electricity there's a bit of a problem whereby the electrons or the charge can't flow. So this word static is really important and it will help us remember that we've got this situation where charge can't flow. And static electricity is caused by a build-up of charge. And the two opposites of charge are positive charge and negative charge. And hopefully um, you'll remember that electrons um, are negatively charged. So if an object gains electrons, it will become negative. And on the other hand, if an object loses electrons, it will become positive. Okay, so we need to remember this is a really key uh, thing that we need to remember for this topic of static electricity because it will help us in our understanding. So gaining electrons, if an object gains electrons it will become negative, if it loses electrons it will become positive. So let's go on to talk about how this build up of charge happens. First of all I'd like to introduce a couple of key words and they are insulator and conductor. And these are the opposite of each other. An insulator is something that doesn't allow charge to flow easily. And in the opposite, a conductor is something that allows charge to flow. So some types of materials that are good conductors, well the main one um, and the most important are metals. All metals are good conductors and you may well remember a diagram for a metal perhaps looking something a little bit like this. Um, this comes about in the chemistry where you would have seen like the metallic bonding where you've got a regular arrangement of positive metal ions and then you have free electrons or delocalized electrons that are allowed to flow through. If you think about it, because these electrons are carrying charge, this is a material that allows charge to flow. So the electrons can flow through, which is why um, metals are used in wires for normal electrical circuits. On the other hand, then you've got an insulator, so things that don't allow charge to flow easily, and they include things such as air, or materials such as wool or carpet, and things like that. So the majority of materials, I would say, are insulators, whereas all metals are good conductors. And this is important because static electricity comes about when we are talking about insulators. So you can't build up charge in a conductor because the charge will just flow through. That's why earth wires are made out of metal, because earth wires are a safety feature which allow um, current to flow through. So earth wires, um, obviously made out of metal, they allow the charge to flow, but only charge can build up in insulating materials and we'll look about how now. So to do that we need to remember um, what we said just previously and that's the idea that when you're charged you can either become positive or neg negatively charged depending on when the, whether you give or take electrons. And to cause two insulating objects or insulating materials to become charged, you literally have to rub them together. So over here we've got um, a plastic rod and a t-shirt. And if you rub these two insulators together, um, you have the potential for them to become charged. So that physical action of rubbing those materials together will cause them to become charged. And what's happening is as they're rubbing together, electrons are physically being ripped off one material and collecting on the other. So as this rod is moving backwards and forwards um, past the t-shirt, 
the electrons will be ripped off one material onto the other. Now in your exam you don't need to know um, about which types of materials become negative and which types become positive. You don't need to know for example whether a polythene rod or an acetate rod becomes positive or negative. They'll give you that in the question. You just need to know the idea that this friction between two insulating objects will cause static electricity. So in this example here I'm going to assume that when we rubbed that rod against the t-shirt the electrons were ripped off of the rod onto the t-shirt. So the t-shirt gained negative electrons and therefore the t-shirt overall became negatively charged. On the other hand because the rod has lost electrons to the t-shirt that will now become positively charged. So that's the first bit about static electricity, the idea of how objects become charged and hopefully you're aware by now that they have to be insulators and it's physically rubbing those objects together and ripping off electrons that causes these objects to become charged. Now they build up that charge, okay, so that charge is stored on that material. So you end up with something that's positive and something that's negative storing that charge. That charge can't flow, hence it's static electricity. Static meaning it stays in the one place. If you were then to touch something metal, because metal's a conductor, that will allow the charge to flow. You may well have become charged yourself before. For example, if you are walking on the ground in your socks, you are rubbing your socks against the carpet, and that could cause you to gain charge because you are an insulator. And in that case, if you then to touch your hand on um, a metal doorknob, for example, or something metal, you might feel a spark. Um, and a lot of time people do that in cars as well, when they're rubbing their clothes against material seats in cars, they are gaining charge and therefore when you touch a conductor like a metal that charge is then able to flow and will cause a spark. It's exactly what happens in lightning over here. So lightning is caused because in clouds you will get a build up of charge, it kind of collects as positive charge at the top of the, these storm clouds, negative charge at the bottom and then it will cause a spark down to earth where that charge needs to discharge and go down to earth as lightning. On a Van de Graaff generator as well, you may well have seen those in school, um, inside this there's a belt and there's two insulating materials rubbing together producing a, a charge in different areas of this machine. This sphere builds up charge on the top and if you touch it that will then cause your hair to stand on end because each of your ends of your hair has the same charge that is then repelling each other. So really importantly you've got to stand on an insulating material when you use the Grand Van de Graaff generator to allow yourself to build up that charge otherwise if you stood on the floor you would just get um, a current flowing through you to earth. So as a safety feature more than anything you have to stand on this insulating material. Now, the second key thing to remember is the idea that like charges will repel each other as seen over here. So if you bring two like charges together they will repel. Like charges is just the word we use for the same so positive and positive will repel each other. On the other hand if you put a positive charge and a negative charge together they will attract each other. So like charges repel but opposite charges attract. So in both of these cases when these two charges are interacting with each other they experience a, a force um, between them, it would either be a repulsion force if they're repelling each other or and attraction force and it's all to do with the fact that these materials are now charged um, so it's a kind of electrostatic force you might remember this word from chemistry when we're talking about electrostatic forces 
um, in ionic compounds where you've got positive and negatively charged ions, this electrostatic force of either attraction or repulsion between these charged objects. Now the main thing that they'll ask you about in the exam is how static electricity is generated. So hopefully you get from this video that's by rubbing two insulating materials together and electrons being transferred onto one of those materials. They won't ask you in detail about van how Van der Graaff's generators work and they won't ask you in detail about how lightning works. Okay, there's just a couple of examples that they might include in questions, but the main thing is asking your understanding of how static electricity is generated and also they might ask you to apply your uh, understanding of these two things, the idea that light charges repel and opposite charges attract. So thanks very much for listening. If you found this video useful, then please press the like button below and feel free to subscribe.